And somebody else it would be really nice to talk to um, is usually sitting right here where I am now presenting this show. But today our friend Andrew McLean has swapped seats. As a loose woman, she's opened up about many things on this show, all the trials and tribulations that she's lived through. But last year, unbeknown to many of us and her closest friends, she suffered a very private breakdown. Uh, but after getting the help and support she needed, she says she's rebuilt herself and she's feeling stronger and happier than ever before, which is good to hear, Andrea, and it's good to see you smile. And it's very strange for us all today, isn't it? You there at home... It's so weird! ..interviewing you. But mm -hmm. I'm so pleased that, that you said yes to do this. Um, and, you know, you, you talked about the breakdown and because of that, you've written the book, um, This Girl Is On Fire, How To Live, Learn and Thrive In A Life You Love. And you have come through this, but I'm interested what prompted you to write the book because coming through, I know, has been a difficult journey. But So you must have had to kind of rake over a lot of things to, to get this book out there. Mm. Why did you want to do it? That's such a good question, Ruth. And it's something that I think a lot of people who have been through the experience that I have will, will understand just how difficult it is. It is scary to write a book like this because you're, you're literally poking a wound that you've, you've given yourself so much love and care to finally let it heal and scab over. And to write a book, you, you're kind of poking and picking at it. So why do it? It all started with one phone call. And it was basically, it was someone that, that, that we know in our family. And they were, we were all on the phone, it was on the speakerphone. And they were moaning and kicking off about the same things that they'd been moaning and kicking off for literally for years. It was the same problems that we'd offered advice on and they'd just not taken it. And they were banging on and banging on. And I was going through what I was going through and I just thought, do you know what? I can't listen to this anymore. And I went upstairs and, and Janet, you'll know this. I have a notebook with me everywhere I go and, and it was in my handbag. And I literally sat on my bedroom floor and I wrote the prologue to what became a book. And it literally was, it's a swear word, but it happens. Mm. You can understand what that word was. Mm. Get over it. And the, that was how the book sort of started. It was aimed at not just people who've been through really raw and difficult personal experiences like I have, but also generally women who find themselves stuck but aren't doing anything about it. It was to show them you can. And what, what were you actually going through at that time? What happened to me was, uh, you all know that I, I went off and did SAS Who Dares Wins. And I can remember at the time you all going, you're insane. I don't know why you're doing this program. And I remember I, I, I came back and, you know, people asked how it was. And I said, oh, yeah, it was pretty brutal. But I didn't go into what had actually happened there. How I can best describe it is there's a moment when you have a black, co black cotton bag pulled over your head and you're marched along and you're interrogated and all this stuff. There was a moment when this bag was ripped off my head and it was as if the, the, the mask that you all, we all put on, the mask of being a, a wife, a mum, a, a professional person was ripped off. And I've sort of mentioned this before, that's what happened at this time. What I was going through when I came back was some really traumatic things that have happened to me in my life. I had moved on, I had put them behind me, I had done what many, many women out there do. I'd put them in a box, pretty much buried them in a garden, put a tree on top of it, put a swing on the tree, don't look in that box anymore. And we mm. think that that's it dealt with, and it's not. And at that moment when I did SS, the box opened, and I couldn't get everything back in again. And that's what I was dealing with. Mm. One of the things that, obviously, Andrea, I've worked with you for many years, and one of the things you've always uh, done is present this appearance of being in control, very efficient, very, you know, I'm doing OK. But, of course, now I realise that behind that facade, it was chaotic and you were falling to pieces. Now you've written the book, what have you put in place to stop yourself going back through that cycle again? Because we all know that women particularly are guilty of repeating. You know, we make the same yeah. mistakes over and over again. So how do we change that pattern of behaviour? How do we protect That's ourselves so... for the future? So brilliantly put, Janet, and I think you're right. And as, as women, referring back to the woman that I was talking to who's just moaning and not making any changes, we do slip back into our old patterns because there's almost a comfort in our discomfort. We kind of know where we are with, with that. But 
the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I realized that's what I was doing and that's what so many women do. So what have I done? Do you know what, Janet? You'll be really pleased to hear this. I know that sometimes I come across as Mrs. Stepford wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you, you've even said it to me. There she goes again. <laughs> and I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not just smiling and saying, oh, okay. And, you know, taking the short end of the stick just because I'm the one that's easygoing. And I'm speaking out. If, so, if I don't like something anymore, rather than thinking, do you know what? I was very afraid to speak out before. Lots of reasons. Uh, in some cases, the repercussions were, were terrifying. But in others, I didn't want people to not like me. That was a fear in itself. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm not scared anymore. I don't, I'm, I don't care if people don't like me anymore because this is, this is who I am. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is I say now. I say I'm, either I'm not happy with this or I'm starting to feel a bit strange. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back off. But today I'm not going to be as busy as, I, as I've booked myself in to be. I'm going to back off. Because I think we tend to put everyone else's needs first. As long as everyone else is happy and as long as they're okay, then I'm okay. And that's ridiculous. That's not the kind of advice we'd give to a friend. So take our own darn advice. That's what I'm doing. Andrea, yeah. Andrea, I read your book. And one of the things that, I mean, you talk very openly and very raw, but one of the things I didn't realize was that you also had, as well as the emotional breakdown, you, you know, had a financial breakdown as well. I mean, how did that impact on you? Um, shame. The main thing was shame. Uh, the, the reason that I let, I, I got into such a financial mess and I really thought about putting this in the book because there is so much shame involved mm. with, with taking your eye off the ball financially. But I thought I cannot write a book about piecing your life back together because of whatever it is that you are trying to overcome. Obviously my thing is my thing for, for many women out there. It's dealing with, uh, you know, the marital problems. Maybe you mentioned earlier, obviously kids going away to university and suddenly women are finding themselves at a crossroad. There's almost a, 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 a shame in being brutally honest with this is one of the things that I overcame. And I thought I can't write a book telling women how to overcome things that there is light on the other side without literally laying it all out on the table. And one mm. of those things was I took my eye off the ball financially while my head was in a bad space. Um, but I did mm. and I got over it. And you realize actually when you say it out loud, there were so many people that have contacted me um, over social media. I've, I've obviously emailing me through the site and everything, just saying, thank you for being open and honest. Thank you for not doing some kind of Pollyanna. This is how I'm amazing and how you can be too. This book is not that. It's quite sweary. It's quite raw. <laughs> it's how I really am when I'm not turning Andrew it to Andrew McLean, sweary, <laughs> surely not. <laughs> surely yes. not. It is very raw, Andrea, but it, it's very good. It's very honest. It's very open. And also the good thing is it's very positive as well and it's lovely to see you smiling again and you have come <laughs> through it you. and the book is out today thank you for having me not <laughs> at all see you back here sometime yeah thanks <laughs> thank you very much